Rejection has become my middle name. When I never feel bad, feel bad, come on, yeah. Obviously, I'm joking. That's not my middle name. La is my middle name. Welcome back to my channel. For those who are regulars and for those who literally accidentally stumbled upon this because they saw the title and thought it might be interesting. Um, it took me a long time to come up with um, the concept or the look or the appearance of this video regarding this topic. Initially, uh, I wanted to do some kind of a tell-all story. And then I realized, yeah, no, I'm not about that. I, I, that would involve potentially burning bridges and I did not want to do that. Um, because, you know, you never want to completely close a door because, you know, if, if an opportunity presents itself, you don't want that uh, window to be hindered by obstacles that you created. So without going into details that will take over an hour to explain, the past three years have been interesting. And those who know me, know that I use the word interesting to talk about, you know, things that are, have been unpleasant or how, how do we say in French, désagréable. So yeah, the, the past three years in terms of um, change and opportunity, and I've mentioned it in a past video, um, let's just say that I was ready for change, change wasn't ready for me. So basically, I've been facing a lot of rejection and I mean it's one thing to to deal with rejection and every every scenario presents the same um, reason for rejection in my case every different scenario I encountered where I was willing to embrace change uh, the rejection was accompanied with a different reason every time if 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 you get the same reason by like five different people, you, you probably would have to like, you know, interpret that as, well, maybe I shouldn't be embracing change. But every scenario had a, a, a different explanation, a different reason, reason as to why I was being reject, rejected. And faced with that rejection, you can react in different ways. In my head, there are about three, three ways to deal with rejection. The three R's. Don't worry, none of them involve math. The first one is what I call rage. You know, you explode. You blow a gasket. You throw things. You stomp your feet. You slam the table, you slam doors, you slam your fist against the wall. Let me be clear, I've never actually resorted to violence. But for some people, dealing with rejection involves a whole lot of negative energy. And I know some people say that uh, reacting, raging so strongly um, can be cathartic, can be liberating, um, and to a certain extent, you know, screaming in a pillow can release a lot of pent-up um, emotions. So yeah, raging is a, uh, a normal reaction to rejection. Second, the second form of reaction, the second reaction to rejection presents itself almost I don't want to say in a positive way, but a lot of people misinterpret it as a positive reaction. But it's not. I call it redirecting. It's almost as if you're blaming circumstances that are beyond your control in order to not feel guilty for that rejection. It was someone else's fault. Well, they were uh, looking for a different candidate. Uh, they don't know what they're talking about. Can't they see that they're missing a fantastic opportunity? It's almost as if you're taking the mirror and in order to better understand yourself, um, 
either as a person, as a leader, as an educator, you turn it on the other side and you say, well, the problem's not me. Um, the problem was somewhere else. And it's, it's sometimes easy to go and use that path when you are dealing with rejection because you don't want to rage. You don't want that negative emotion. So you are uh, redirecting all of that negative emotion to others and blaming others. Reaction number three. And to be honest, it's the one that requires the most work because it is so easy to go back to the first one and the second one, and that's reflect. Reflecting involves a whole lot of introspection and questions, not about what they did wrong, but what, maybe not what you did wrong, but what you can do better. It involves a lot of learning. It, a lot, it involves a lot of, of um, humility. It involves a lot of, of um, analyzing, opening up potentially old wounds and old problems and old issues that you didn't want to open up. Because often those old issues, those old problems come with, uh, with baggage and you need to unpack that baggage in order to better understand what to do to move forward. Because that's, that's um, I don't want to say an easy trap to fall into. Because you say to yourself, if you want to change, you might be in appearance, or at least at the surface, ready for change. But then if you have to deal with rejection, are there any underlying issues that haven't been addressed that perhaps can cause problems to you fully embracing change. Let me be clear. I think we all go through those three reactions. I think everybody rages from time to time. Uh, I, think, I think we all deal with that frustration. And it's, it's, uh, I think it's normal to have those uh, those reactions, especially the, the raging one, especially the, 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 rege uh, the um, uh, redirecting. It's a normal part of, of, of dealing with rejection. But I think in the long run, if you want to progress as a person, as an educator, as a leader, you have to embrace reflecting, which means more work, which means um, a, a greater appreciation of your faults, but not as an obstacle to change, but learning from those obstacles, learning from those faults, and knowing how to tackle them better in the long run. So that was it. I, I didn't want to do a whole, whole long video uh, about this. Like I said, I... I played around with different scenarios on how to present this and y'all know me, I have very limited editing skills um, and i rather just be straight up up front and, and talk to you directly about, about this because maybe you too are dealing with rejection and uh, I'm not a guru, I'm not a self-help guru, I'm not a life coach. Do I look like a life coach? I do not look like a life coach. I'm not a life coach. But if anything in my video has helped you and helped you think about um, how to face, how to face um, rejection, then yay, I've done a good thing today. On that lovely note, folks, have yourselves a lovely day.